All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. In front of us, we have a picture of Prophet Muhammad. I uh, sorry, this is a picture of Suleimani, uh, but I think they are cousins anyway. Uh, so, uh, Prophet Muhammad, when he died, his death have nothing to do with the death of Suleimani. Uh, however, both of them they have a lot of the same work and deeds. Uh, and Suleimani is really a very, very supposedly a very good man according to the. Uh, Islamic world depend in the sect for sure if you are a Shia you love him if you are a Sunni you hate him and this is the case for everything in Islam however today our topic is about Muhammad Muhammad before he died he asked for something very weird now you know the reason we are questioning not because of the act itself but because of Muhammad taught us some information about what happened before death? The last thing Muhammad he asked for before he died is to piss. Actually, he did not go to the bathroom to piss. Uh, he asked Khadija, uh, sorry, Aisha, to bring him one of the food dish and he pissed on it and he died. This was the last wish in this man's life, which I find it very strange. And I find it strange too that Aisha she is reporting such a statement that the last thing the Prophet he did before he died, he asked for a dish and then he pissed in it and he died. So if we go to the Hadith, which uh, uh, we will see uh, here, it says, and as you see, this is Sahih Hadith, so the Muslim cannot say it's weak. They said in, in Aisha, presence that Ali was appointed by the Prophet before he died and she said when was he appointed he the Prophet was resting against my bosom on or in my lap and he called for a passing then he become limp in my uh, lap and he died now uh, <clears throat> this hadith here doesn't say really the whole story I mean, they cut off what it says. Okay, he, he asked for a dish for what? He asked for a dish to piss in it. So in order, in order always to, to, to learn the truth about Islam, you have, to, you have to dig yourself because they try always to hide it. So if we go to different hadith, um, let us try to find something about it. Because here it doesn't say show really the truth something fishy exactly here you know I mean they are not showing real truth look the same hadith appear in different text Aisha radiallahu anha etc reiterated that all blah, blah 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 she gave him support with her chest or she said in her lap and he asked for a container to urinate and he urinated therein therefore he passed away that's very straightforward uh, uh, words uh, in the other one, they try to hide what he did with the dish. In this one, it says clearly that he urinated. Now, this is not really a big deal. I mean, the guy is dying and he went to piss. So what? I mean, what? What, what is exactly? Uh, what is exactly the problem? Uh, the problem is really bigger than this. You know, the problem is bigger than this. If you remember, <clears throat> Muhammad he claimed that when Moses, Allah sent the angel of death to take his soul, and this is Sahih al Bukhari, as you see, Hayat number 1339, the angel of death was sent to Moses. And when he went to him, Moses slapped him severely, spoiling one of his eyes. The angel went back to his Lord, and he said, You send me to a slave who does not want to die. Okay. Now, let us compare between the story of Muhammad and the story of Moses. You see, remember, both is about the same person is talking. Muhammad asking for the dish. He went to piss. Muhammad died. How come when the, when the story is about Moses, Moses, he re refused to die. Not only he refused to die, he did beat up the angel of death. 
How come Muhammad, nobody asked him if you like to die? Read carefully with me here. It says, you, you send me, the angel saying to Allah, you send me to a slave who does not want to die. Is it really up to us to like to die or not? Can we stop Allah from taking our soul if he is God? What it does it mean exactly by saying you send me to a person who don't want to die? And how Moses avoid death, avoid death, he did slap the angel, he, he did box into him, he gave him a blow in his, in his face, and he uh, knocked off his eye. And then the angel went back crying like a baby to Allah saying to him, you send me to a servant who do, does not want to die. Allah, he restored his eye and said, go back and tell him, i.e. Moses, to place his hand over a back of an ox, and for he will be allowed to live for a number of years equal to the numbers of the hair coming under the, his hand. I mean, this is funny. So the angel, after Allah, he restored his eye. Allah, he sent him back again. And he told him, okay, tell him to put his hand over the ox in the, in the, in the top of the body of the ox. And he will live accordingly based in the number of the hair under his hand. Now, I mean, that will be a million hair, maybe. How many hair he have, the ox under his hand? I mean, what does that mean? Because obviously he's talking about an ox which have hair, not like they, there's some cows, they don't have hair at all. So, based in how many hair is under your hand, you will live. But look here what happened. When the angel of death, he went to take the soul of Moses, he was doing the order of Allah. And the Muslim, they claim that uh, it is Allah who wrote your death and your life when he created you, which means nobody can change that. But as you see, Moses, he was able to change that. All what he needed to do, he did beat the angel of death and he gave him a blow in his eye and he took his eye off the angel went back, Allah, he gave him another option, and then Moses, he lived for many years after that. So how come Muhammad did not, was not given the same option? Why Muhammad, all the option Allah, he gave him to remember to piss before he died? Who deserve more to live? Muhammad? or Moses, according to Muslim, Muhammad is the best of mankind. Same time, Muhammad, because he, don't, he cannot keep his mouth shut, he said, uh, <clears throat> when a man, he go to the bed, when a man, he go to bed, an angel, he come to him, and a shaitan come to him. Read carefully. Jabir said, when a man enter his house, or goes to the bed, an angel and shaitan has to enter him. So there is shaitan and there is angel, both of them in the same room. The angel says, seal it with good. Hmm. Seal what? Seal the end of your day, which means because you might die. The shaitan says, seal it with evil. Okay. So if he praises Allah and remember him, he chases, chases, uh, the, shaitan, he chases the shaitan away and spend the night with his, him guarding him. When he wakes up, the angel and the shaitan has to into him to say the same thing. If he mention Allah, praise be to Allah, who keep firm hold in the heaven, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so, okay. So, when you go to the bed, each day, shaitan and angel, they come to you and they say to you, seal it with good. Did Muhammad seal it with good by pissing? The last thing he did, it was to piss. 
You see, Muhammad did not pray before he died. He did not uh, say like Shahada. Even Shahada did not say it. You see, the Muslim, when he died, he put his finger out, up. Supposedly, this is the best to say before you die. But as you see, Muhammad, when he died, he was just, he just pissed. He did not see it with any good, is, is, unless pissing is something good in Islam. Uh, uh, I don't know if there is a Muslim want to tell us, do you think that somebody he piss is that a good deed? Is that a good deed? Because as you see, the angel, he says to you, seal it. Seal it with something good. The shaitan, he says to you, seal it with something evil. Muhammad, he did see it with what? He piss. Number two, why he did not do the same as Musa's? Number three, can you change your destiny of death based on the story of Musa's? Absolutely you can then. But this is totally a contradiction for all of Islamic teaching, including the Quran, because there's a verse in the Quran where it says, let us find it, <coughs> chapter 31, verse number 34. Let us open it. <coughs> Verily Allah, with him, and between two brackets, alone, is the knowledge of the hour. He sent down rain. He know when uh, that which in the womb, and no person know that he will earn tomorrow. And no person know what land he will die. Verily, Allah is all knower of all things. Oric. And now, I mean, I find this verse is hilarious because, I mean, I can't tell you the weather for the coming 10 days. And actually, most of the time, it's very accurate. Secondly, Allah, He says, the moon split asunder and the judgment day is near. And that 14 years ago, nothing happened. Allah is the one who sent down the rain. That need to be proved. Allah, He know what is in the womb. Will it take you to take you ten dollars to know what is in the womb of your wife? Even you can decide that you can you can find out if it's a male or a female. No person know what he will earn tomorrow. I think I know. You know, Especially if you are a government employee, your salary will be exactly the same as the month before, the month before, the month before. It's going to be the same for the coming century, actually. <laughs> and then no person know in, in what land he will die. Well, that's not really uh, too much true. I mean, what if a person, he don't travel anywhere, he will die in his place. I, I mean, all of this is a statement, but the most important is nobody knows. Nobody knows. When he will die, nobody knows. What is the weather tomorrow? Nobody knows what is inside the womb. Nobody knows the hour. All of those are knowledge of Allah, only limited to him. And this is proof proven to be false because, you know, little tiny machine can tell you what your wife she is carrying in her, in her, in her you know, uh, and the gender of her, the baby. And they can even take a picture for him. Uh, the weather news, they are telling us about the weather and some time in details, which is really amazing. We know when the hurricane is coming way before. We know when the snow is coming way before. But the most important, no person know in what land he will die. What about knowing when he will die? Actually, this is what it's trying to say to you. You do not know where you will be standing when you die, maybe. Not about traveling, maybe, right? So, because you don't know when you are going to die. But if you think about it, Moses, he broke all these verses and exposed Muhammad, for he chose when he, he, he will, he, will uh, he refused which land to die, because the angel, he came to him, he was in a land, whatever his land is, I mean, his house, his neighbors, in the, in the, in the, in the synagogue, it doesn't matter. The angel came to him and Suleiman, he blew the eyes of, uh, give him some boxing. And the angel, he went to Allah crying and says he don't want to die. So Muhammad, he, by telling those stories, it's a chain of contradictions. 
In the same time, why Muhammad, the last thing in his life, he never thought about praying to Allah before he died. What about saying the Shahada? The Muslim, they will say to you, there's other hadith. Well, other hadith really, uh, you know, will not be contradicting those because you might say that the Prophet, before he died, he pray maybe, okay? But obviously, the last thing he did, he piss. And there is no way that his wife is lying about that. So, why Muhammad, he did not feel that his death is coming very soon. He is a prophet of God. Allah told him about the end. Allah told him about Suleiman die standing over his stick. But Allah will not tell him that now it is your moment. Why Muhammad did not even feel it? And why even this story is reported? Why every Muslim need to know that the last thing the Prophet he did is pissing? Is that a point of history? You know, when when Christ, he was in the cross, he said, forgive them, Father, they don't know what they are doing. And after he finished talking, he says, it's complete. It's completed. It's perfected. Which means, he knew the moment. For this is the last word he said. Muhammad, the last thing he did, he pissed. If there is any Muslim, have any comment? Any Muslim, no? Yes, not only Jesus, he knew, he said it's completed. Jesus, he, he knew who was going to betray him, what they will say, what time, uh, uh, you know, and he, he pointed, you know, like at, the, at the person who will betray him. So not only Jesus, he knew the hour, he knew everything. He see it as if it's happening, like in front of him. Yet Muhammad, he have no idea. Why? If Muhammad is the greatest prophet, as you see, Musa he reject his death time and he changed it. Musa, by doing that, he proved that Islam is false because destiny is proven to be false too. Secondly, even uh, the Quran says that Isa he knew the unseen. Muhammad he did not know the unseen. <clears throat> why Jesus he can do it Muhammad he cannot look what Muhammad he said when they asked him how come you do not know the same as like Jesus as an example he said don't ask me question about things I know nothing Allah says to Muhammad Qul which means say, I don't tell you that with me are the treasure of Allah, nor I know the unseen, nor I tell you that I am an angel, but I follow what is revealed to me by inspiration. Now here the word inspiration is very funny because all of us, we knew that everything Muhammad he learned, it was a delivery by words, not by inspiration from an angel. His name is Jibreel. You see, if somebody speak to me, that is not an inspiration. Inspiration, something, and somebody speaking to me, 
giving me word by word is something else. If somebody brought me a message from a king and he recited the message, that is not inspiration. So even the choice of words in the Quran is stupid, proving to us that the one who is speaking, he have a low IQ. But what is important about this verse, chapter 6, verse number 50, that Muhammad, he admitted that he knew nothing about Allah, treasure. What is Allah, treasure? It's the knowledge. Because he's talking about, I know not. You know, I cannot tell you about it. I know not the unseen. I am not an angel. Why? What do you expect from me? But then if we go and we read a little bit in the Quran, we will find in different places where Jesus, he can tell you the treasure of Allah, can tell you the unseen. He can tell you even what you are thinking and what you had in your houses. If we read as an example, chapter 3, verse number 49, Isa, he says to them, I heal the one who is blind, I heal the leper, I bring the dead to life. Not only he tell you, he heal the dead to life, he bring him back to life. And the Muslim here says, it says by the leave of Allah, no problem, why Muhammad don't have that leave? He don't have it, obviously. And uh, prove to me that this is by the leave of Allah. But what, what it's confirmed that Jesus, he can do all those things. And I inform you what you eat and what you store in your houses. Surely this is a sign for you if you believe. Okay. So it's confirmed that Jesus, he knew the unseen. It confirmed, this is chapter 3, verse number 49. It's confirmed in Quran chapter 6 verse number 50 Muhammad he did not know the unseen. Why? Any Muslim have an idea? Especially if we take into consideration that the Muslim claim that Muhammad is the greatest prophet between all the prophets. How come the greatest prophets the last thing he do he piss he cannot heal anyone. He do not know anything about the unseen. He cannot tell you the treasure of Allah. He cannot tell you what people are thinking. He cannot tell you what people hide in their houses. He cannot tell you what people eat. Yet, Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, He can tell you. Not only He do it, He even in the Quran says, He designed you out of a clay, as if it were. The figure of a bird and I breathe into it. Who is the one breathing? The Messiah. From the breath of the Messiah, life is given. The Messiah, he made the blind see. The one who was born blind. He healed the leper. And he bring the dead to life. As I thought only God can bring dead to life. And then I inform you of what you eat. Hmm? Now, in the present, you can hide yourself, eat, I will tell you what you are eating. Now, I can tell you what you store in your houses. You are you, in your houses. I am here. I can tell you what you have in your closet. And that is surely a sign for you. What kind of sign the sign is? How Muhammad, he don't have such a sign. None of them. The Muslim, the only sign they have about their prophet that he used to have sex with all his wives in one night with, with one wash. The Muslim, in one of the videos, his name is Fifi, he did not agree with me, so he wanted to correct me. He says, no, CP, it doesn't say every day, CP. It's in a day, in a day. Oh, the prophet he do boom boom to thirteen wives in a day, not every day. Supposedly this is the correct answer. 
So while Muhammad, he was a hero, according to Muslims, that he can have sex with 13 women, Jesus, he can heal the leopard, he can make the blind see, he tell you what you had in your houses. This is not only miracles, that's God. Because nobody knows the unseen save God. Remember, Jesus is challenging the crowd, not challenging a person. This is not a word for a person. This, he's talking to the children of Israel, all of them. Saying to them, I can do all of this. And I did. Imagine you have a country. You have a country, have hundreds of thousands of citizens, and you can tell them what each one of them hide in his houses. <clears throat> so why Jesus he have that, Muhammad he don't? Why Jesus he knew the moment when he will die? Why Jesus knew he will betray him? Why Jesus he knew the hour? Why Jesus knew what they will say? Why Jesus knew everything? And Muhammad did not know when he will die. All what he was busy about is to piss before he die. So the only feeling Muhammad he had before his death is his testicles telling him, I need to pee. That is the only thing Allah, he helped him. So how this is can be a prophet of God? And why he don't have any of what other prophet of God they have? You see, if we assume that Jesus is just a prophet as Muslims, they say, okay, no problem. Let us say for the sake of argument, say, okay, Jesus is a prophet according to Islam, no problem. So why Jesus was given all those ability, which is ability of God? You see, bringing people to death from, from death, this is not for a prophet to do. Giving life to the mud, that is not for a prophet to do. And the funny, by the way, the Muslim, they say to us, that when you are a person, believe that Jesus is God, you are committing great sin. Here you see the stupidity of the cult of Islam. Because don't alarm you that if Jesus cannot do any of those things, we will not worship him as God. As an example, let us say for the sake of argument, a guy, he came, he said, I'm Jesus, and uh, worship me as God. We will not believe him for a very simple reason. You have to do what God do. If you read with me, the Quran confirmed that Jesus, he do as God do. He create from the mud a figure, and he breathe into it, he bring it to life. The Muslim they say with Allah leaves, that will make it even more funny. Because the question will be, why only him? Okay, Allah gave him the leave. Okay, Allah, he gave him ability to create like him. So now we have Allah and Jesus, both are the creators. The Quran says that. Jesus is given, I'm going with the Quran. You see, I don't believe that Allah, he gave Jesus any ability for anything. That's a lie. But I'm going with the logic of the Muhammadan. If Allah, he gave Jesus the ability to create, that means we have two creators. And that is a disaster. Based on the Quran right now as we speak, there is birds flying in the sky created by Jesus. This is what the Quran is saying. The Quran is saying that Jesus, he created and he gave life. We don't know what he gave life for. Here they are to talking about the bird. Maybe he created a human too. Actually, there's a hadith about Jesus. He brought to life Noah. Let me see if I can find you the hadith. I will see if I can find you uh, the, video, the, uh, the hadith in Arabic. <coughs> mm. 
Imagine Noah. You know, Noah. I mean, Noah is how how Jesus can bring someone. He became sand long time ago. Bring him to life. Uh, let us see. Um, I need to find it in English, otherwise, let us see. Yeah. This one, we did not find it. I'm sure I can find it somewhere in English, but it might take some time. I don't, I don't like to mention something without uh, giving reference, so uh, let us see. <clears throat> let us try this one. All right. Hmm. Not in English here. Let us try the from one. Now because there's many hadith, you see, but all of them until now I did not find anyone in English. <clears throat> We are trying one after one. Let us see. Yeah, the problem this website is not really that good for searching. Um, well, if we could not find it in English, then we have to find it in Arabic and show it to you and use Google Translation. Okay, well, let us go then. I could not find it in English. So... <clears throat> we have to use Prophet Google. All right. I have the hate already in Arabic, but I'm trying to find at Tafsir, all right, let us see this one here. All right, this is Google translation, all right. This is the book of a Tafsir of a Tabari. Uh, 
Oh, this is Tafsir. Hold on. Uh, Tafsir Al Aqam. It is see Al Qurtubi. This is Al Qurtubi. Okay. Let us see if we can use Google Translation here. This is Al Qurtubi. Mm. All right. Translate to English. Oh, there's no translation to English. Why? I guess this page. Okay, let's try here. All right. As you see, this is a this is Google translation, so it's not really accurate, but better than nothing. Uh, so supposedly, uh, the disciple of Jesus they said to him. Can you bring us somebody to witness to what happened to Noah, to the ship of Noah? Let us see here. Ibn Abbas said, Al-Hawari, which means the disciple of Jesus, Isa. Uh, they said, can you send us a witness for the ship to tell us what happened to it, you know? Uh, then, Jesus, he grabbed some of the sand, not garbage here. He grabbed some of the sand. Or let's say he took them to, 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 uh, uh, to uh, like little tiny hill of sand. And then he took a grab in his hand in his, in, of sand. And he, said, and, in, uh, uh, and he said, do you know what is that? He said, no. He said, this is Noah. So Jesus, he came to the sand in the desert, you know, this is, this is supposed to, this is Muhammad telling the story, remember, it's not, not me. This is one of the fabrication of Muhammad. So, but we will go with Muhammad fabrication, fabricated story. Imagine I'm walking with, with you and I say to you, can you bring us somebody to witness from the time of Noah to what happened to Noah ship? The Messiah, he walked right away, like maybe 50, 100 meters away. And he said, do you know what is this? And he grabbed some sand from little tiny, like little hill of sand. They said, no, what is that? He said, this is Noah. This is Noah. I mean, they just asked him about, about the, uh, to bring a witness. The guy, he just grabbed, this guy whose name is Isa, supposedly, he grabbed some sand and he said, this is Noah. And then they said to him, Allah and his messenger know best. Hmm. He said, this is, uh, I don't know what the word in English. Um, you see, what is the, what is the, th the thing in, um, next to your, let me find translation, hold on. Google Translation. I'm trying just to find what the word is. He, the heel, the heel, your heel, your heel. He said, and he grabbed the sand, and he said, this is the heel of Noah. The heel of Noah? Yes, the heel of Noah. And then he said, this is the heel of Ham, the son of Noah. It depends on the story. Some story they say it is Noah himself. Some story they say it is Ham, the son of Noah. It doesn't matter. And then the Messiah he hit the sand with his stick. He have a stick with him.
and as soon he hit the stick, he hit the stick with the sand, and he said, come out, come out. by the will of God. And then, a man, he came out from the sand. And he is shaking the dust from his head. Isa, or the Messiah, he said to him, uh, Is that how you died? I mean, what does that mean? Is that how you died? Which means, the way you are now. Is that how you died? The man, he said, No, I died and I was young. But I thought it is the time for the hour. So like the, the, the Messiah is asking him, okay, why you're here sound like uh, green, like you're, you're, you became old. Is that how you died? The guy, he said, no, I died when I was, as I was young, actually. But when you brought me to life, I thought this is the judgment day. So I'm scared and supposedly his hair is getting gray. And this is why... I had gray hair. And then the Messiah, he said to him, tell us about the ship of Noah. And then he told him about all the information about the ship of Noah. Now the Muslim, they will say, this is the Eve hadith, etc., blah, blah, blah. I mean, as usual, Islam, all of it is garbage. You know, when they say uh, this is da'if, this is, this is strong, it is just additional proof that Islam cannot be trustworthy. It's a collection of garbage and stories, fictions. But here, as long as the Muslims are the one collecting the stories and those stories written by somebody, accepted by somebody, printed by somebody, taught by somebody, and that somebody is called Islam. Then we have to ask ourselves, how come the Messiah, he can bring Noah from the time of, or the son of Noah, from the time of Noah, and tell him what happened, witness for us. You know, when the Muslims accuse Muhammad that he stole an underwear, if you remember, Muhammad, he could not tell us who is the one who took the underwear, because obviously it is him. So what he said, it is not for a messenger of Allah, to steal. Okay, but who is the one who took the underwear? Allah is trying to prove to us that Muhammad is not a thief. He was accused by the Muhammadan that he stole a red panty. But the problem is not here. The problem if Allah is, told, is the one who told Jesus uh, who is the one, what they hide in their houses, the secret of those people, etc. How come he could not even tell us who took the underwear? They are fighting over the underwear. Muhammad, he was accused of stealing a piece of a clothing, which is stolen already, you know, for them, they attack, they attack the people, they stole their clothes. Imagine how criminal they are, savage. And now the thieves are fighting who stole the theft, the booty, the parrot of the Caribbeans. And what Allah says, it is not for a prophet to do steal. Okay, who is the one who took the underwear? I mean, you are Allah. So Allah have time to tell us that it's not Muhammad who took it, but he, don't, he cannot tell us who is the one who took it. You know what I'm saying? While Jesus can bring the sons of Noah 
thousand of years ago from the sand he grabbed any sand and he made the sand come to be alive and he said this is the son of Noah this is Ham hey Ham tell us what happened to you the God of Muhammad according to Muslims as you see all the stories were shown according to Muslims we are not quoting from the Bible the God of Muhammad could not prove that Muhammad is not the thief because saying he is not the thief but yet you could not bring us the thief that's mean it's Muhammad the thief actually this verse confirmed that Muhammad is the, th the thief you know what I mean because if Muhammad is not the thief and Allah is God then Allah will say who is the one who took it <laughs> correct if Allah is God and obviously somebody took the piece of their clothing okay and Allah he could not tell us who is he obviously it is Muhammad you know what I mean it's obvious because this is God who knows everything all what he need to do okay that would be a miracle tell them okay the one who took it is this guy they go to his house they, or they, they ask him to take off his pant they will see that he is wearing it that's it and that will be like Muhammad he will prove himself okay he finally I have something to show you but what happened is nothing but a claim that it's not Muhammad who took it so who is the one who took it you are God So actually, this verse is a verse proving to us a conviction of Muhammad being officially a thief in order to defend his honor. He could not prove to us that he's a prophet because a prophet and God told him, you see, this, look, people are asking who is the one who took this piece of a cloth? Allah is God behind the seven seas, the seven midgets, seven, seven ducks, and seven, and seven watermelon. Yet he do not know who is the one who took the piece of a cloth. All what he is saying to, to us, the one, Muhammad did not take it. You know, I remember when I was a kid, I, 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 like, I like sweet, you know. I love sweet. So, uh, they, uh, you know, uh, they, they, they make a sweet, we have visitors coming, and I could not resist eating it. I could not. I'm just a kid, you know. So, I ate the sweet. First, I said, okay, I will eat one cookie, then two, and then three. I said, okay, there are too many. I mean, they will not even notice them. Then the three became four, the four became six, the six became seven, the seven became ten. And then I said to myself, you know what? I will be punished anyway because I ate more than half of it, so I ate it all. I mean, I will be punished anyway. Hello? Anyway, so I ate the Holy Sweet and I, I went out of the house. I It was summertime, so I kept away from the, from the house until I saw the lights are coming down. You know, there's no lights. So I said, okay, and my mom, my mom is asleep now and everything is safe. And I will go sneak inside the house. I went inside and right away, my mom, she is like, you know, she is looking at me. And because I'm guilty, I said, it's not me. <laughs> you, you see when you're guilt? Because I'm guilty, I said, it's not me. But she did not ask me anything yet. She said, about what? What not me? Not me? What? <laughs> That's Muhammad. Muhammad saying it's not me. I mean, it's obvious. It's not me. I did not even ask you yet. How do you know something is missing? <laughs> And this is exactly what happened to Muhammad. But Muhammad is a man, he's not a kid. Eating cookies, not me. He's a man who claimed to be a prophet and as you see, his God is involved. Allah, he sent a verse to save the honor of the prophet who been accused of stealing a lingerie. 
By the way, the Muslim, they will say, lie number 100 for 40, 50. The Prophet did not steal lingerie. It was not an underwear. It was a bra. I don't care. He's a thief. And this verse convicted Muhammad from his own mouth that he is a thief. Because if he's not, he will tell us who is the one who took the underwear. Not only you say, and you are God. Okay, I mean, God himself is involved in an underwear story. Hmm? <clears throat> God himself is involved in us. And by the way, the Muslim, they will say to you, where do you get this story that they accuse him that he stole a piece of a cloth? Okay, let us show you. <clears throat> we don't make things up. <clears throat> let us see if this website will work. Sometimes it doesn't work. It looks like it's working today. Okay, we open it. This is the book of Asbab al Nuzul. This is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. It says, Some red velvet acquired as booty from the idolaters. So, see, they are thieves at the Battle of Badr and was encountered for. And some people, who is the people? The Muslims, because they are the ones who this, they divide the booty, they are the criminals. Perhaps the Prophet took it. Hmm? Do you see it? So Allah, he sent the verse, it is not the Prophet who took it. And not only that, obviously it is a theft accusation because the word in Arabic in the Quran says Yawul, which means to, to steal. If you go in the Quran here, you see, it says to take illegally, what illegally? What does this translation mean? Illegally, to take illegally. Why? They, wanna, they are trying to make it look nicer. They don't say he, he was a thief. What illegally? If somebody takes something illegally, what that make him a thief? And look at this translation here. Uh, no prophet could be over false of his trust. Uh -huh. I mean, we are changing translation. Everyone, someone saying take it illegally, the other one at the trust. What is this? Ah, embuzzle. What embuzzle mean? What embuzzle mean? Let us see Google translation. Embuzzle. What embuzzle mean, brother? Steal. Steal. Embezzle. Do you see it? So they accuse him of what? Stealing. Now here you need to ask yourself a very simple question. What kind of disciple Muhammad he have? Because those are his disciples. You see, Jesus have disciple, Muhammad have disciple. The disciple of Muhammad, they are accusing Muhammad that he stole an underwear. I mean, can you imagine? What is the quality of his companions the companion of the prophet they accuse their prophet that he is a thief so you can tell exactly what we are talking about a bunch of thieves and he was their gang leader so what we can say here that the guy with one eye in the in jack sparrow uh, uh, ship he accused jack sparrow to steal the you know somebody helmet or panty. This is telling us 
the quality of Muhammad and his companions. You see, to reach the point of accusing your prophet to be a thief, obviously all of them, they are a bunch of thieves. And now they are fighting over the booty. To reach the point that they are fighting over a piece of clothing, it's not gold, it's not silver. It's a piece of clothing at the end of the day. That is hilarious. Tell us how savage they are. And now we are receiving a verse from the God himself. About what? About a missing piece of clothing. Now we cannot make Zachary Nayak here because Zachary Nayak is upset for me. Uh, Zachary Nayak, he called the police for me. You know, he told the police, I want to do something. There's a person his name in the crypto print. And he is using my voice. And actually he applied for a credit card using my voice. Claiming that he's Zachary Nayak. And actually, he purchased an underwear using my name, and then my credit. And so, so Zachary Naik is accusing me that I use his voice to purchase an underwear. Okay. And then soon Allah will make a verse says, it's not for Zachary Naik to steal. It was a Christian. But he will not say it's a Christian prince because he do not know. Hmm? <clears throat> What is this? This God, this is... Who is it? With, uh, I mean, this is the most stupid story ever. A prophet, he died. The last thing he do, he piss. The prophet been accused that he stole an underwear. His God, he sent a message to clear him from the crime, but he did not tell us who is the one, which means until now the underwear is missing. I just want to share some ideas with you guys. And if you are a Muslim, please think carefully what is this is about. What is this? You want to talk to me? Islam is the truth. Well, Islam is the truth. That's it. You already talked to me. Is the truth already? Your name is Islam is the truth. Here we go. Muhammad is not a thief. <laughs> My friend, you do not even need to talk to me. Islam is you, like your name. Islam is the truth. And how we can prove it? Allah is the only God who give me in this private part. I mean, this is obviously Islam is the truth. So your private part will be in Galaxy 7 taking your turn in galaxy 8 taking your turn right left up down in galaxy 22 going to the stars is called Sheba Miba and then coming back going around the star because it's burning star it's called Doom Doom and then going all the way inside the black hole going through the black hole coming from the other side from the black hole and that is still going Obviously, Allah is the only is a true God. It's to establish the truth. I mean, who is who in the world can promise us in this private part as Allah? Nobody. Nobody. It's clear. It's like light. I mean, who need even to debate about it? It's, isn't it obvious? Or uh, 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 the God who promised me an orgasm of 70 years? It's obvious. 70 years. You see, if he says 69, it's fishy. He said 60, uh, 70 years. Oh, hold on. We have a we have a more clear proof about Allah as a true God. Uh, do you remember when Allah He said He will insert in the anus of the one He don't like a chain? I mean, have you ever heard of a God speak in such a way? Hmm.
This is God. What which is this? You have a proof that Islam is false, but it take you hours. You would only need one minute if you have a proof that Islam is false. Oh, great, my friend, I, I'm not going to wait. Uh, uh, what the pro After all what I said to you, I need to prove to you? Huh? Oh, I want to waste my time. If all what I say to you is not enough that Allah is false, huh? there's no, no need to waste my time with anyone. <clears throat> you know if you go in the verse the one is speaking about you can open Ibn Kathir and die laughing and the funny the chapter number is 69 obviously it's a it's a miracle Chapter 69, speaking about inserting something in your anus. And this is supposedly God. Who's talking? God. And the Muslim, they say, where it says anus? Where, 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 where you are lying? Hmm? Where it says that? I can show you. Chapter 69, verse number 32. Hold on. Let us open it. You know, even when you show them, still they deny. So what if you don't show them? They deny and they accuse you of lying. Uh, even you show it in the screen. So imagine if you don't show it at all, and you say it, they will make a big drama about it. This is Ibn Kathir, let us put it in the screen. <clears throat> then fasten him in a chain where for the length of 70 cubits, Every ring of it will be equal to the entire amount of iron found in this world. Okay, hold on. You will insert the chain which every ring of it is equal to all the iron in the world inside a human being? I mean, how big the anus of this human being? If every ring is equal to all the iron in the world, like how many billion ton is that? Then fasten him. It will be entered into his buttocks and pulled out of his mouth. Do you see it? Where they will, uh, what? Where they will insert it, brother? In his buttocks? May Allah buttocks you. The buttocks religion. So every ring of this chain is equal to all the iron in the world and all of this will go inside the buttocks? How big is your buttocks? How big it is? Six foot by six foot? We will make it 100 meter. Huh? How each chain, each ring of the chain have all the equal, all the iron in the world. I mean, billions of tons. All of this will go in your inners? And you asking me, you said to me, in, in, all what you need is one proof to prove Islam is not true? Well, obviously, I cannot prove it to you. I mean, this must be true. I mean, how we can deny that Allah must be God? Allah, the God of the buttocks. He, he will bring iron, he will make it as a chain, and he will insert it in your buttocks. That's God, that's it. No one can do that save Allah.
you know I don't know what how Allah will insert all this iron inside your buttocks but it must be a miracle and he will insert it from your buttocks and he will take it from your mouth I mean look at this this God is having fun Hey Allah, can I talk to you? I'm busy. I'm, I'm, don't you say I'm inserting iron in the buttocks? Okay, Allah, when you will finish buttocks business, can we talk? No, I cannot talk because don't you see my hands is dirty, full of S-H-I-T? By the way, when Allah, he insert the chain in the buttocks, is his hand getting dirty or something or he's wearing gloves? I'm assuming a lot of nice smell will be there. Hmm? I hope he's wearing, you know, especially that we have coronavirus and you never know, especially if he start doing that to the Chinese these days. He will start with the Arab, my people first, or with the Chinese first. By the way, we Arab, we don't have such a thing. I mean, our, 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 uh, our poop is the uh, best fertilizer in the world. You know, America, they are coming to our land, brother, to occupy our land, brother, just for our poop. And our poop making oil, you see? The cars in America run by our poop. Because we do a lot of poop. Poop everywhere. In the roof, in the street, brother, everywhere. The king is full of poop. The police is full of poop. The judges, well, we have poop as much as you wish. And our boob, brother, became uh, oil. And now Allah is making his own poop. Oh, here we go. This is God talking. This is not God. This is a stupid idiot. Chain inserted in his buttocks. And this chain is so huge. What is this? Thank God at the time of Allah, he don't, there's, no, there's no YouTube. Otherwise, Allah will make a YouTube of this. Do you think Allah will make a video channel and show us how we do this? Like inserting chain, a chain in the buttocks of people? Let me guess what Allah will call it. Buttocks. Buttocks. Uh, uh, buttocks Tawheed. Uh, buttocks. Allah knows best. Something like this, you know. have to be a Islamic name <clears throat> and you are asking me uh, can I prove to you that Allah is not God and obviously nobody can prove that to you and look how big this uh, guys look how big this uh, this uh, 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 th this this thing look 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 then they will be arranged in this chain like the lactose or arranged on a stick barbecue and then they will be roasted. <laughs> okay, are you saying Allah, he cannot roast us unless he do uh, insert the buttocks things? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Al-Wafi reported from Ibn Abbas that he said, it will be ran from his behind until brought out of him his nostrils. If, 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 if. So he will not be able to stand on his feet. Me, that's very, that's very hard. <laughs> expert, expert Arab. They knew what happened there. And then it says, if a drop of a lid like this, and he pointed to the skull bone, we are sent from heaven to the earth. It is the distance of 500 years of travel, brother. And it would reach the earth before the night, brother. And in the same drop of the lid, brother, we are sent from the end of the chain of the El brother. It would travel 40 seasons. 40 seasons? Oh, I mean, all of this information is accurate and it's coming from the lab fresh. I mean, I just contacted NASA. You know, NASA, they are Arab, by the way. NASA, we all, you know, we own NASA. We are the one who made NASA. We, in the, in the old days, my grand, grand, grandfather, we are Arab, you know, we are Arab. We used to call it NASDAQ, you know, because we are the one who started the stock market. And then we said, okay, we will change the name so to confuse the infidels. So we said we will call it like NASA, which means we forgot, you know, NASA, NASA, you know, NASA. So NASA, okay, we forgot. So 
if they try to steal information from us, we say we forgot. True, this is a true story, brother. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> Now, if all of this is not convincing for you, I don't know what is convincing. Be honest with me. The last thing the Prophet he do, he piss. Not to pray to Allah. He asks for a dish and he piss in his bed. The guy, he can't even move. I mean, why Allah did not provide him with some health so he can at least go and piss normally? Hmm. The reference, what reference? This is Ibn Kathir. Here we go. Let me post the link for you. Anytime you see something in the screen other than the Arabic, unless you speak Arabic, you can type exactly a line in English in Google Peace Upon Him and you will find the reference. Let us say you want to find this. Are you watching my video maybe a year after? And you want to find this reference. Just type like, okay. And he pointed to the skull bone, you know, etc. Were sent to the heaven, to the earth. To type this sentence, and he will find it in Google. You know what I mean? Like, if I search right now here, if I highlight this, and I click search Google, you can type it. Just type it exactly as it is, and you will find the reference. Very easy. Any Muslim have any comment about the Potex God and the Potex Prophet? And by the way, there is something unique. <clears throat> Muhammad, he never pee standing according to Aisha. Aisha, she said, if somebody said to, me, to you that the Prophet ever did, do, did pee standing, he's lying. Sure, Spice, you can convert. Just repeat after me. That you witness that Allah, the God of the buttocks, and the Prophet is his, his buttocks prophet. I mean, isn't it obvious? All this information is coming from Muhammad. You see, everything they say here, who is the one who's coming? Who's behind these stories? And many of the stories, by the way, Muhammad, he brought it. It's coming from stupid books written by some rabbis. The Jews, they, they did fool him. The Jews, they screwed him. Muhammad, he associated big time with the Jews. He lived between them. And, you know, there is books, uh, the Jews, they have, which is rubbish, garbage. And there is legions. And Muhammad, he accepts whatever the Jews, they say to him. Anything the Jews they say, Muhammad he take it for granted. Anyway, we are not going to keep you here for long. I just wanted to share this information with you. Don't forget to download the videos and share them with your friends. And I hope let us let let us hope that the Muslims their buttocks is protected. And I hope that Allah will not even get close to their buttocks. And if you are a person who is not sure that Allah is upset from you, you better buy insurance. You can buy insurance from the insurance corporation of the Prophet Muhammad. You send them donation for the Prophet Muhammad. Actually, there is a way to protect your buttocks. Anyone remember? Who remember the video about the, the punishment of the grave? Who remember? Anyone remember it? Give me one if you remember it. The guy from Pakistan who was speaking about the punishment of the grave. And he said in the video, you can watch it. He's, he's not bringing anything. This is from their hadith. He said, and if you read the Quran, that to protect you from the bottom. If, 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 if. So now the Quran is the protection for buttocks. You remember the video? He said, if you read Quran, 
that protect your bum your bum brother so Quran, if you read Quran, brother, for sure, this is that's mean I, nothing, nothing will happen to me. Nobody read Quran as I do. As I, do. I mean, every day, every day, every day. I'm so happy now. My buttocks is very protected. I have six walls of, of concrete between me and Allah. He cannot get to my buttocks. I read a lot of Quran. I mean, who did read Quran more than me? Nobody. No wonder I feel that my buttocks are safe, man. Quran protect our buttocks. You know, when the Muslims they die, Muslim Sunni specifically, they insert a piece of cotton or cloth in his buttocks. You know that? Actually, <clears throat> I don't know if I can find you this hadith. Hold on, you remind me. Why our nights switch to be about buttocks now? That's disgusting. Uh, let us see. Hmm. <coughs> I mean just to show you I'm just looking for the hadith and look what I found this is Islam my friend inserting figure in the back passage <laughs> but can a man rob or insert his finger in his wife anus to please her. <laughs> this is Islamic questions. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Islam, what? <laughs> what the website is? And there is a hold on. I wanna I wanna see the answer for this one. This is hilarious. Forget about my hadith now. <laughs> this is more important. <coughs> I can't breathe. Man, what is this, man? Okay, hold on, hold on. Question and answer, brother. Category zigs. Okay. Finger in anus. Oh boy. Serious topic. <clears throat> uh, one of our brother and sister has asked a question. He is a brother or sister. You are not sure it's a brother or sister. <laughs> I mean, this is a very religious form. We have to admit. This is a very holy religious form. I mean, you can tell. Brother and sister with a we are, we are brothers and sisters. So, one of our brothers sisters had, has asked this question. Hmm. Sounds serious. I understand that penetration through the anus forbidden it, but can a man rob? <laughs> I'm not going to read it. That's it. <laughs> Okay, I better stop here. <coughs> oh boy. All right. If this is a religion, this is true religion, not like uh, Christianity and you know, and this is this is real business. This is business, brother. Huh? I better stop here for today before we, you know, we we end uh, we end somewhere. Clearly, fa a false seat, F false what? You mean sight? My friend, what false sight? Okay, hold on. Hold on. What if I show you from the Quran something similar? Here we go. The Quran says, Nisa'akum harthun lakum. Your women as the same as tilth. 
So dig in your teeth as you wish. Isn't it the same? Dig as you wish. Dig where? Are you there, Abdul? This is Quran now. You will say to me, this is fake Quran? Do you see it? Your woman has a teeth for you? So dig in your teeth as you wish? What does that mean? Dig where exactly? Hello? <clears throat> it's too late to stop now. No, it's not too late. I better I better go before we, uh, we you know somebody said in the in the chat if we share your video we will end in jail. See what this is. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, if. I mean, if you brother, if you have a question and you want to answer, go to those Muslim website and ask any question you want about your finger, about it here, there. No problem. Islam is very open-minded religion, right? It's obvious. Hmm. I better stop here. So, guys, should we continue in the same time or we make it earlier sometime? Because I'm doing it now for the last week, almost every day in the same time. <clears throat> Maybe I should do it some, a little bit in daytime for some time too. Daytime USA, which means night. Like if we do it after 12 um, noon time in USA, that will make it kind of like 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. in, in Indonesia maybe. We will try to make just, uh, you know, a mix of timing so people from different places can join us to be fair with everybody. It doesn't say that, CB, I know. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> oh, what we can say. This is Islam. This is Islam. Just watch your finger and uh, you know secure your buttocks because obviously Allah is targeting the buttocks of every one of us I mean Allah is telling you from now you don't believe in me your buttocks is my target hold on I, I, I feel like I'm gonna do a drawing now <clears throat> You know me, you know, I have like a, a special skills in art, as you know, you know, and I cannot resist sometimes my skills. Okay, so let us say this is Allah, and Allah is a sniper. Allah is what? He's a sniper, you know, sniper? Okay. Now, this is your buttocks. Allah, brother, he is targeting as we speak right now. Hmm? And he have his sniper machine in his hand. And he is aiming as we speak. You move right, he move right. You move left, he move left. And don't worry. He will hit you. And his bullet is going to be what? The chain rings. Like, you know, which every ring of it have more than all the iron in the world. Oh, mommy, oh, mommy, mommy blue, oh, mommy blue, oh, mommy, oh, mommy, 
Oh, mommy, mommy, how dummy you are. No, oh, mommy, blue. You must be dummy. Oh, mommy. I mean, really, you must be a dummy to believe in such a garbage. This is God. God targeting Aaron's. So are you saying to me now, uh, I am I am I'm keeping Allah busy now? Let us shake it. Okay, so Allah cannot really hit it. You know, like, <laughs> oh, mommy. Oh, dummy, dummy, you. Dummy, dummy, you. Oh, mommy. How stupid to believe in this. Oh, boy. Anyway. <clears throat> Oh, you want me to sign my name? Okay, hold on. Uh, I will put uh, my signature so nobody can, yeah, I forgot, so nobody can st steal my uh, copyrighted uh, uh, art. All right, I will use my short uh, Arabian name. Muhammad. Oh, what is this? I'm typing in which language now? I hate these things. It's very slow. Muhammad Ahmad Ali Mustafa. Queen Yusuf bin Ahmad Ibn al Hussein, son of Muharram, uh, Ibn Mahmud. Guys, come tomorrow, okay? I'm just typing the name, you know. I'm, I'm just, uh, okay, take the take, take, uh, take beer, you know. I'm just typing the name, it's, uh, the name is coming, you know. So, like, take your time, come tomorrow, have a lunch, take a dinner, you know. Yeah, one of the most boring day in the Middle East is the first day in the school. The teacher, he asks every student to stand up and say his name. And all of us, our names is like a train. Muhammad ibn Ahmad ibn Ali ibn Hassan ibn Chattara. Like, come on, man. Like, don't you have, like, a first name and last name? No. The whole tribe will appear. What is missing is to mention the size of the buttocks in the name and to tell what the prophet he do before he die, he urinate to. All right. <clears throat> Thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And uh, forgive me, please, for using such a language. But as you see, our topic is garbage. So garbage in, garbage out. What you expect when we speak about the our our lord the that the topic will be holy when we talk about the garbage garbage is garbage we can't make it look nice so forgive me please for language we use here because we have no choice as you see urination piss buttocks boobs nipples i mean don't, did i say nipples Hada, don't say nipples you know in islam we cannot say nipples but we can suck them brother if you are adult and you are my neighbor you cannot shake hands with my wife, okay? I will kill you. But you can suck her nipples. Halal, halal. I mean, have you ever heard of religion like this? You cannot shake hand with the with the wife of the neighbor, but you can suck her nipples. That's very conservative. That's the most conservative buttock, buttocks religion ever. Don't even even try to shake hands with my wife, brother. very 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 amazing i believe so guys thank you very much for being here i will try tomorrow to come earlier so we can share more time with others if i can we will see if not then with the same time as tonight and until i see you soon again uh, remember maybe what we do here is comedy but this is a drama for there's millions of people believe in this garbage and they are willing to kill for it literally so it might be funny, it might be stupid, but a human being is a very sad creature. His IQ gone way beyond stupidity to believe in such a garbage. And not only to believe in such a garbage, but to believe that he should kill for the sake of that garbage. And this is why our fight is big. And what we do is very important. So thank you all for being here. And I, if I am a Muslim, I will make a toilet day to remember in the remembrance of the Prophet Muhammad.
because before he die he piss so we don't why we don't make a statues for a dish and a guy pissing in it to remember the prophet this is the last thing he did show respect the last thing he did don't you remember him with that you should do you should do and this is how we do it thank you very much may the lord bless you and until we see you again christ is lord islam is false and we prove that every day take care bye bye